Hi everybody, I'm Greg Rowark, Director of STEM Education here at Redbird Flight Simulations, and congratulations on your purchase of a J Velocity Edition desktop flight simulator. Today's video is going to cover how you actually build this. I'll be covering it from how we get it out of the boxes to how it's assembled and how it's powered on. So with that, let's get at it. So now that we're ready to build our J Velocity desktop flight simulator, a couple of things I want to cover. First of all is the table that you're going to use. We recommend a nice sturdy table that is going to be supported at the front edge of these tables. The reason that we do that is because, remember, in a simulator you have a lot of fore and aft movement that you're going to be making on the yoke. And the one thing that you don't want to have happen is you don't want a table leaning or, or even worse, uh, actually even pulling a table over. I've seen it. And so it's, it's one of the things that you need to consider about where you're going to put this desktop unit. Uh, the, the J desktop unit only has one screen, and so with that it doesn't require the width of, say, like a TD or a TD2 with a horizon kit, but it does require a couple other considerations. One is electricity. So where are you going to plug this in? That's going to be something that you have to think about. Also, internet connectivity. I strongly recommend a hardwire Ethernet connection. If that's not possible, then a wireless connection is possible, but you have to provide your own wireless dongle, a USB dongle that will be plugged into the back, and I'll show you later on where you would do that if that's what you choose. My preference, of course, is hardwire. Hardwire everything if you can, just because it takes the finicky nature of wireless out of the equation. So, you need to think about that also, plugging it in. One thing I would recommend is at least a power strip. You can actually, with the, the, uh, with the draw that you're going to have from one of these J's, you can actually, with a power strip like this, you can actually plug in two J's in this. It will power both of them through this one, uh, this one power strip because you're going to have two plug-ins. You're going to have one for the base, you're gonna have one for the monitor. So a power strip at minimum is what I would have. The reason being is because you wanna give a little bit of electrical protection when you can. If it's me, and again, understanding that I have had these units in classrooms for over 10 years and have gone through students uh, the way that they treat the equipment, regardless of your best efforts, but also because of some of the electricity uh, surges that can happen inside a building, whether it be a school or your home, if it's me, I'm buying a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. It has a battery, it has a, 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 uh, a surge, not just even a surge protector, but what they call a surge conditioner or power conditioner that they have, which is kind of the next step up between something like this. Regardless of what you choose to use, just understand that you want to protect it as best you can from any kind of electrical issues that you may have in your home or your building, so it's just something to consider. Now, the other thing is that people ask me is what type of tools am I going to need to put this together? This is it. These are the only tools required for you to put together your J. And with that, let's go ahead and unpack the boxes. You'll notice that you're going to have two white boxes for the monitor and the base, and you're also gonna have a brown box. Those are going to be for your rudder pedals. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and pull these out of the box. Now, before you do this, here is something else that I strongly encourage you to consider. Get a Sharpie marker, and I want you to write on there what it is that you're pulling out. If you, un, uh, if you take this first box and you find that it's the monitor in there, on the top of this box, write monitor. And then if it's the base, write the base. Rudders, write rudders on the box. The other thing is to number them. In this case, I'd go one of three, two of three, three of three. And save the boxes and the packaging. Don't just go at this like a four-year-old at Christmas. The reason being is because you may need to move these at some point. You may need to send one of these units back to Redbird uh, for some form of an upgrade, let's say. Well, if you do, you want to ship it or move it in the box it came in because these things have been engineered to help protect everything inside. So, save the boxes, 
take pictures of everything. When you open a box, take a picture of what's inside so that you know how it's packed and everything that's supposed to go inside that box, and that would help ensure the fact that it gets back in that box if you have to move it. So, Sharpie marker, label what's in it, one of three, two of three, three of three, and then also take pictures of everything before you unpack it so that you can make sure that you get it packed the same way that you unpacked it. And now I'll go ahead and pull the contents out of the box and we're going to go ahead and start setting stuff up here on our table. So here you'll notice I've taken the base. It's all one piece. I've lifted it out of the box and I've put it on the table. That's all the harder it is. It really isn't that tough. You may want to get two people to do it. The heavy end is going to be toward the back of these units. So just kind of keep that in mind. But it's doable for one person to do it, you know, if you're, if you're muscular. <clears throat> so, or not. So I, I've put this here on the table so that you can see how I try to position these. So you'll notice that what I've done here is on the side with the yoke, I've tried to give a little more room to the left side of the table over there just so that I can make sure that I can have one of my students get a chair in there so that they can sit squarely behind the yoke here. Also, you'll notice that with our tables, there's ample room here for someone else to be sitting over here in the buddy seat. So now I'm ready to put the monitor on top of the J-Velocity. But instead of just coming right at the top and mounting this first, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to connect all of the cables that go onto the monitor, and you're going to see why in just a second. I'm going to place the monitor on top here, and then we're going to get a close-up of the bottom portion so you can see what we're looking at here with regards to cabling. The first thing I want to locate is going to be my power. So I can see my main power socket here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my power cord to this before for I actually mount the monitor onto the J. The reason is, is because it's a lot easier to put the, the power in here than it is to wait until after you put the monitor in and then you're trying to snake the cables up. You're kind of guessing where the actual inputs are for the power and the, the HDMI. So it's a lot easier to be able to do this here in this orientation before you mount it. Next, I'm also going to connect the HDMI, the HDMI cable. It's going to plug in right here. So now I've got my HDMI cable. I've got my power plugged in here. I've got my HDMI cable plugged in here. And with that, now I'm ready to pick up my monitor and mount it on the front of the J. Each J comes with four of these thumb screws, and this is what I'm going to use to affix the bracket onto the base. So I pick up the monitor, turn the monitor around thusly. I'm going to snake the cables between the brackets. The reason that I like to snake the cables between the brackets here is because sometimes you'll have things that wind up, despite your best efforts, getting in the way. And so rather than do that, I run all of my cabling through the center portion of the brackets. And I'll show you a picture of that here in a little bit once we get around to the back side. So now that I have the bracket mounted here to the actual J velocity, one thing I want to do before I tighten everything up here on these four thumb screws is I want to make sure that the leading edge here of the monitor is right here at the edge of the actual simulator. So I'm going to slide this forward slightly so that it's right there and it's flush with this leading edge of the sim. Then I snug everything up. And again with this, you don't necessarily have to gorilla these things on here. Just getting them snug is going to be fine. Starting to look like a simulator. What's it taken me? About two minutes to do this. It doesn't take long to set these up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the entire table around so I can show you the back side of this to show you where everything else gets plugged in. Now let me show you the back of the unit and where you're going to plug in the rest of the cables. So if I go here, basically from the left side of the screen here to the right, 
You can see down here, this is where your master power is going to go. So here, I'm going to plug in my power cable. Take the power cable and plug it in here. I also want to point out that your master power switch is right here, just to the inside portion of your actual power cable. Next, I want to show you here this horizontal row. This horizontal row that you see here is what we refer to as the motherboard. The motherboard is going to be a portion of this where all of your USB connections are made, where also your hard wire here for your Ethernet can be made. And you can see here that I already have one of these small little units that we call a dongle. And this is a wireless dongle that you can use if you want to connect wirelessly here as well. And in this case, I have one of those here in one of my USB ports. So this is where all of your USB connections and your Ethernet connections are made right here. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and pre-plug in the USB for my rudder pedals. Plug that in here, and that will go in here once I connect my rudder pedals. Also, my keyboard. I'm going to plug in my keyboard here also. Plug that into one of these. It can be basically any of the USB uh, units that you're using here right now. The other thing here that I want to show you is this vertical row. This vertical row that you see here, these are what we refer to as graphics cards. Graphics cards are where you're going to plug in your video. So it's important to remember, the video goes in the vertical slots here of the graphics cards, not the motherboard. The motherboard does not get anything having to do with video. It goes here on this. And so I'm going to plug in, this is a DVI plug. The DVI plug is one, it looks kind of like a VGA if you're familiar with that. But the DVI has a little bitty, teeny little horizontal little pin in there. And that, you line that up, that gets plugged in here onto the graphics card, snug this up, and again, just snug, it doesn't have to be gorilla on. So that's how you're going to connect here for your, your video. Uh, and then we also have the other power cord coming here. Uh, so that is what you're going to be uh, seeing here on the back side of your unit. Remember, the horizontal row here, this is going to be your motherboard. The vertical row here on your J-Velocity, this is going to be your graphics card. And this is where you will mount your video. And there you have it. Here is the J Velocity. You'll notice that I have the rudder pedals. I placed the rudder pedals underneath the yoke. I plugged it into the USB port. I have all of my power plugged into a power strip here. I'm, I have my keyboard plugged in. I'm going to turn on my master power here in the back. I'm gonna turn on here my main power here on the front. And with that, we're going to watch the machine come alive here. And one thing too that you might want to consider is also I use zip ties and what I do is I try to do this thing that we call dress the cables so that here in the back you can kind of make the cables look a little bit better keep them out of harm's way if you're back up against a wall it may not be as big of a consideration as it would be if it were in an open area but I just like the the way it looks better there as well so with this, we can see that we have our, uh, our J velocity coming on. We're here uh, cycling through. Uh, it's also going through a portion here where the navigator is loading. And here we are on our navigator page and we're ready to launch a flight. It is quite simply that easy. It is truly plug and play here with the J velocity. I hope you found this helpful and look forward to seeing you soon.